Hello YouTube. Today we're going to finish up the course of um, har harmonics of creation, a course in manifestation. Um, let me see here. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to start with, uh, let's start here. This is Thoth, uh, image of Thoth, by the way, the um, the Egyptian god of wisdom. The ancient Greeks considered Hermes, or Thoth, to be the three times greatest in the passing on of holy knowledge. They therefore honored him with the title of Trismegistus, meaning thrice greatest. The ancient Egyptians called him Thoth the Atlantean. Their picture of him is on the left. The mysterious Thoth or Hermes is the greatest source of inspiration for my work. His most famous words are, as above, so below. As mentioned at the start of this book, or this course, to me this means that as the flow world is, so is also the shadow world below. Being the shadow world is nothing more than a reflection of above, being the flow world. There is another meaningful interpretation of as above, so below. By understanding ourselves, meaning below, we also understand the whole of reality, meaning above. The nine levels of consciousness are present in each human below. In the same way, these levels are present in the whole of reality above. To me, that is why the ancient Greek carved the words, Know thyself, above the entrance to the temple at Delphi. At the moment we were born, our energy values below fully reflected the energy values in the cosmos above. There are various methods for gaining more self-knowledge based on this below-above correspondence. These methods include the signs and tones from the Sol Kin and the monthly constellations from the Zodiac. Other revealing methods are Nine Star Chi based on the Bagu pictured on the left. Bago, that's how you say that, the Chinese astrology, and the Enunagram pictured on the right. To me, all five methods are astonishingly revealing. My advice to you, question everything, keep what is good. And that's some good advice. And this is here, this, and this looks like the I Ching to me, the 64 um, pieces of the I Ching for they use for divination. Um, this is a very well-known symbol. It reminds me when I, every time I see it of the Statue of Liberty, you know, the crown on the Statue of Liberty. I have to go back and see how many points she has on her crown, but that's what that reminds me of. Okay, the code of the source world. This is getting down to the nitty gritty now. The codes of the so source world are ciphers. There are nine basic cipher codes, one, two, one through eight and nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Each cipher has a yin, yin or positive value and a yang or negative value. The ciphers themselves never move because there is no mention in the source world. In the flow world, the codes interact according to specific functions. These functions create the dynamics in the flow world. There are two yin functions, plus and uh, multiplication, addition and multiplication, which create higher numbers, and two yang functions, subtraction and division, which create lower numbers. Two of these four functions, addition and subtraction, are inner functions which have smaller effects and the other two are outer functions which have 
bigger effects. The application of the four functions, adding, subtracting, multipl multiplying, and dividing to the cipher codes results in numbers. Each resulting number consists of one or more ciphers. By repeating adding up the constituting ciphers of a number, we eventually get the root cipher value of this number. Each number has a numer numerological root cipher. Let us now look at the tables of both multiplication and division. We start with the base ciphers of 1 and 8, as shown in the table below. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 1 is 3, so on to 9. Then div division, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by 2 is 2, so forth to 9. Then over here we get 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, and 1 plus 6 is 7. 3 times 8 is 24, and 2 plus 4 is 6. See the, see the cipher here? Uh, 4 times 8 is 32, 3 plus 2 is 5, so it, it, it goes all the way to 9. It's just uh, backwards, you know, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 8 is 64, that would be 10, which would be 1. Um, and then division is the same way. Uh, 1 divided by 8 is 0.125. So 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8. And you know, so on all the way down. Um, which is really cool. The rhythm of both the multiplication and division table of one is simply jumping to the next cipher clockwise. This is a very important, this is the, this is the main deal right here. The figure to the left shows the basic rhythm, which goes on infinitely. We find the opposite of this rhythm when we multiply eight or divide by eight. That rhythm simply jumps back to the previous cipher counterclockwise. Since both multiplication and division result in the same sequence, both 1 and 8 are reciprocal ciphers of themselves. This means that the reciprocal cipher of 1 is again 1, and the reciprocal cipher of 8 is again 8. The figure above also represents the functions of adding 1 or Subtracting 8. In both cases, the resulting movement is clockwise. On the contrary, the functions of subtracting 1 or adding 8 result in a counterclockwise movement. So, um, again, here we have um, what, what it's basically saying is it's going to go um, 2 or, or 1, 2, 4, Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and it's the same as here. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. So on and so forth, and and same with division. Um, the reciprocal cipher uh, for 2 is 5, while the reciprocal cipher for 7 is 4. The tables above represent the multiplications of 2 and 7, and the divisions with 5 and 4. Multiplying by 2 or dividing with 5 results in a clockwise movement while multiplying by 7 or dividing with 4 results in the counterclockwise movement, as shown in the figure to the left. This figure also represents the clockwise. Um, so you see 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. You've got 1, um, then 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay? And pay attention to these, these symbols, how it draws this out, because um, this is cymatics. This is what um, the same patterns, symbols you get when you, um, say, put sand on a on a glass table and crank up some bass you know depending on the frequency of the of the bass the sound waves it will literally make these these patterns here that is the harmonics of creation movement created by adding two or subtracting seven and the counterclockwise movement created by subtracting two or adding seven. The table below shows the multiplications by and divisions with the reciprocal ciphers of the one used here. So, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. See, um, 2 times 4, 3 times 4, so on and so forth. Multiplying by 4 or dividing by 7 results in a clockwise movement while multiplying by five or dividing with two results in a counterclockwise movement. The figure to the left shows both movements. The figure also represents the clockwise movement created by adding four, subtracting five, and the counterclockwise movement created by adding five or subtracting four. Please note that, prov that proving the root value of the fractions with an infinite series of ciphers is beyond the scope of this book or this course. Dividing by seven results in an infinite repetition of a remarkable series of ciphers. The consecutive order in this series is always the same. The figure to the right shows this order. In the series, the ciphers 369 never appear. These three ciphers form a special group in the same way form the reciprocals 4 and 7 are grouped together with 1 and form the reciprocals 2 and 5 are grouped together with 8. So 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9. Okay. The group of 3, 6, 9 is special because the results of any function with these ciphers as base always is a 3, a 6, or a 9. The table below shows the multiplications and divisions for the reciprocals three and nine, or three and six, I'm sorry. So one through nine, one um, times three, two times three, three times three, see, three, six, nine. And same here, it's just amazing. Multiplying by three or dividing with six results in a clockwise movement, while multiplying by six or dividing with three results in a counterclockwise movement. That's just fascinating. The figure to the left shows both movements. This figure also represents the clockwise movement created by adding three or subtracting six, and the counterclockwise movement created by adding six or subtracting three. Okay, if this gets confusing, you can always pause and and write it out on paper. That's what I would do. And once you start writing these graphs out or drawing these, um, I call this toroidal or vortex math. Uh, these, then you really get an idea of of what it is and how amazing it really is. The most special cipher of all is the nine. The result of any multiplication with nine is always a nine. Just like one and eight, the nine is also its own reciprocal. However, any division by nine not always results in a nine. Dividing by nine does not alter the cipher root value, and the same is true for adding or subtracting nine. The table above shows the basic multiplications and divisions with 9 as the, as the base cipher. The figure to the left shows each of the three cipher groups as a triangle. 
The triangle is the symbol for Trinity. Each of these groups is a Trinity in itself. To accentuate that the Trinity of three, six, and nine is special, its triangle has dotted lines. Okay? So this was the one, four, seven, um, and then the two, five, eight, and then you see the three, six, nine. All this belongs to the basics of cipher multiplying and dividing are the four basic functions which create movement in the flow world. Let us, this is, this is the harmonics of creation right here. Um, the math, the, the, the algorithm for manifestation of matter. Let us now look at two advanced functions. The first is doubling. The table below shows the beginning of the doubling sequence. This is where it starts to get really cool. And the cipher root values of each number. So 1, 1 is 2, 2, 2 is 4, 4 and 4 is 8, um, so on and so forth. 8 and 7, 16 goes all the way up, which is, this is binary. This is computer code. This is what you learn and when you're doing networking for um, addresses, when you're um, coming up with dynamic addresses for IP addresses for routers, this is the, the, um, the code we use to do that with. And this is a very ancient, ancient uh, form of math here. This is, you know, shows you how our ancient ancestors were, were way ahead of what mainstream would like us to believe they were, um, because this is how they rolled. This is where we got it from. In the shadow world, there are many examples of projections that result from this doubling series. Firstly, the process of cell division, yes, cell division, results in doubling the amount of cells. After six divisions, there are 64 cells that together form an independent unity, just like the I Ching, 64. Um, the cipher root value also shows this unity since it is one. Another example is the digital programming language, that's what I was just talking about, based on the doubling series combining binary values, yin or yang, on or off, on three positions results in eight different trigrams of the I Ching. Uh, that's what I was just saying there. I mean, that's just fascinating to me. Uh, while combining two trigrams, again, yin and yang results in 64 hexagrams. Lastly, the chessboard also has eight times eight makes 64 fields. So you'll find this, this cipher, these numbers everywhere. The doubling sequence is an infinite repetition of the series of one, two, four, eight, seven, and five. Those, remember those numbers. One, two, four, eight, seven, and five. The opposite is true for the complementary function of having, or halves, halves, having. As shown in the table below, having, halving, results in an infinite repetition of the series of 1, 5, 7, 8, 4, and 2. Let's see, 1, 5, 2, and 5, 7, 8 so on and so forth. The table below puts both series next to each other. The ciphers 1 and 8 appear simultaneously in both series. At the other positions, the reciprocals pair up. 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 7, 5, 1, 1, 5, 7, 8, 4, 2, 1. Both series never a 3, a 6, or a 9 appears. Let us see what happens when we start doubling with three. The table below shows the beginning of this series. Three, six, 12, 24, 48, 96, three, six, nine, or three, six, three, six, three, six, so on and so forth. It's just fascinating that that, that comes out like that. Next, the table below shows the first results when we start having with six. 
three, six, three, six, seven, and five, three. So it goes um, three plus seven is 10 plus five will be 15 and one and five is six. They've screwed up their chart here. That's okay though. Seven and five is, is 13 and that would be a three. They, they just messed it up. Nine is the same way. Nine, nine, see, going by nines. Okay. The figure to the left shows each of these doubling and ha having series. The name I use for this figure is source code because this is the code that is found underlying everything in um, it matter. This is the harmonics, the numbers of creation. This is what they find in physics when they go, you know, looking into DNA and, and everything. This is the, the numbers that they find, the mathematical cipher algorithm. Um, back to one is the doubling series for the common ciphers. When we reserve, reverse the direction of this movement, it represents the having series for the common ciphers, which is one five back to one. In the figure, the dotted line represents doubling and having series for the three and the six. This is not a straight horizontal line between the three and the six, but instead a pyramid shaped line with the nine at the apex. That is because these three special ciphers together create a special series. This series bounces back and forth between the three and the six. This series follows three, nine, six, six, nine, three. Okay. In, in the whole of reality, everything is always in balance. That is why in the source world, every cipher has both a positive yin value and a negative yang value. In total, there are 18 different cipher codes in the source world. Negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. And then you start back up with positive one, two, three, four, that is why the unit of the Sol tune is exactly 18 natural days. Okay. Here's the chart for that. Doubling, special, then having. The values of the ciphers in each of the three series, the doubling series, the having series, and the special series continuously alternate between being positive and being negative. The table above shows the sequences of these three series in which each cipher has a positive or negative charge. Adding up the charged ciphers of the doubling series results in a positive outcome. Positive three for each sequence. Therefore, the value of the doubling series is positive. Adding up the charged ciphers for the having series results in a negative outcome. Therefore, the value of the having series is negative. Thirdly, adding up the charge ciphers of the special series results in a neutral outcome. Therefore, the having of therefore the value of the having series is neutral. That is just amazing. This is, you know, the magnetism. The um this is exactly what matter is is how it's made and, and put together. You see? The three series constitute the threads of which the skin of the forbidden apple of knowledge is made up. These three type of threads continuously spiral in and out the null point in the center of this apple. This skin of threads is ultimately flexible, allowing infinite stretching at the apple's equator and infinite compression in the apple's core. In the apple's skin, the threads are always in the same order in which the positive one and the negative one always lay next to each other, and so do negative eight and positive eight. That just gives me chills down my spine when I read that, because this is so per it's so perfect, the symmetry 
is so perfect. I mean, this is this is creation and the building blocks of. Um, it's just amazing. Okay, here's the the table for for that. The figure below shows also. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say about this this compression. Um, I'm going to do another series by the physicist Dan Winter where he talks about uh, perfect compression and um, and his machine to therify it it uh, lo uh, long longitudinal waves and um, the ability to heal using these these patterns of waves this is exactly that and uh, it's going to be a really cool series. Be looking for that. The figure below shows the temporal changes in the sum values as represented in the previous table. This graph depicts the apple's heartbeat. I mean, the, the perfect sine wave. In the structure of the apple's skin, three threads form a trinity. An illustrating example of this trinity lies hidden in the genetic codes of all organisms found in deoxytribonucleic acid, or DNA. This acid consists of two long polymers of simple units called nucleotides. These polymers are the shadows of the doubling and having series. In between these polymers, there are the projections of the special series, the 369 series. Right? Yeah. This again shows why the special series is special, since its projections do not create material shadows like the doubling and the having series do. That's just totally amazing. There are four types of molecules called nucleobases that enable the adjacent nucleotides of both polymers to connect, each corresponding to a different type of energy, as shown in the table below. Earth, air, water, fire, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. These are the building blocks of life. Just like earth and air, are the inner compressed phases of spiraling energy. The connection between guanine and cytosine is stronger, based on three hydrogen bonds. The connection between adenine and thymine is weaker because it is based on two hydrogen bonds. This matches with the outer expanded phases of spiraling energy of water and fire. Again, the harmonic ratio based numbers of two and three play an important role. Amazing. Both polymers form two helixes. Together with the invisible middle helix, there are three helixes in DNA, which we don't normally hear about that, forming a trinity. In the genetic coding itself, we find another trinity, the fundamental unit with the genes consists of three consecutive nucleobases. For each of the three positions in the genetic trinity, there are four possibilities. G, C, A, or T. Therefore, the total amount of different unit codes are 64. 4 times 4 times 4. Again, if that doesn't just give you chills, I don't know what will. This is, this is magic right here. Again, we see an example of how a unit corresponds to the amount of 64 as represented in the doubling or halving cycle in the source code. Each unit of three consecutive nucleobases contains the genetic code of a single amino acid. The amino acids are the fundamental units for the creation of proteins, which are the carriers of each cell's life force. In human body cells, there are 20 different amino acids. This is precisely the same amount as the number of different signs in the soul kin and the number of discs in the game of international droughts. droughts. Uh, at the cellular level, 20 amino acids play the game of life, and the same do the 20 personal identity types corresponding to the signs in the soul kin at human level. The root value of 20 is 2, which is the doubling series 
is the successor of 1. The root value of 64, again, this fully corresponds to the connecting line in the source code. This is, the, this is it. Let us now look at a deck of playing cards. Both red motifs of diamonds and hearts represent the yin energies, while both black motifs of spades and clubs represent the yang energies. Spades corresponds to the first energetic phase after passing through the zero point. That is why the symbol of spades represents the number one, one point. The symbol of hearts represents two, two points. And hearts is indeed the first energetic phase after passing through the zero point. Clubs corresponds to the third energetic phase after passing through the zero point. That is why the symbol of clubs represents the number three. The point that, that is why this, okay. The symbol of diamonds represents the number four. The diamonds is indeed the fourth energetic phase after passing through the zero point. In total, there are 13 playing cards of each of these four motifs of colors. Nine of these cards have numbers, each representing one of the nine ciphers. Next, each of the remaining four cards corresponds to one of the four types of energy as shown in the table below. Diamonds, ace, earth, air, spades, jack, water, queens, heart, and fire, clubs, king. Everything we are able to perceive or detect belongs to the outer ring of the whole of reality. What we consider to be real reality is in fact just a shadow. All material manifestations in this third ring are holographic reflections of movement in the second ring. That is why everything in the world, in the shadow world, always moves. Modern science is unable to explain these motions because it limited itself to investigating only shadow phenomena. And it takes me to the, uh, I believe it was Socrates' cave, where. Um, the people are watching the shadows on the wall and have no idea that the shadows are actually um, just not the real world. They're just shadows of what the real things really are. And that just really makes you think about, um, you know, if, if we're the shadow world, how amazing is the real world going to be when we shed our skin and make it back to our first estate? Can't wait. Ancient science describes, you can check this out, this is the toroidal um, the field that I was talking about, how the energy um, goes in and spirals down and then comes back up and out in a never-ending infinite dance. Um, platonic solids, so code energy matter, meaning motion manifestation, source world, flow world, shadow world. This is our reality and how it's built. Simple as that. Ancient science describes the flowing nature of life energy. The forbidden apple of knowledge displays the continuous flow of life energy. The apple represents the spiraling dynamics in the flow world, being the second ring of the whole of reality. In the core of the whole of reality, we find only nine ciphers each having two possible charges. Each cipher represents a ratio since each value in the whole of reality is always relative to other values. The apple skin is made of threads of these charged ciphers in fixed sequences. The spiraling motions of these threads project the shadows we experience as being real. Now, you might want to pause this and reread all of this that I've just done through this video because this is the conclusion. This is the manifestation, how all of this comes together and, and how it makes up our world, um, literally. Spiraling motions of these threads project the shadows we experience as being real.
I hope y'all enjoyed this series. Um, that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, this this is basically the beginning of of uh, of a bunch of more in depth courses that I'm going to go through. But you have to have a base knowledge of of this algorithm and how our world is put together to understand any of the other stuff. Once you get this down, you can see that our world and the elements in it can be manipulated very easily if you know what you're doing. Um, manifesting matter is, is as simple as learning how to control these numbers. All right. That's it. Thank you.